Is it possible to date when you travel in an RV? In this video, I share my 10 dating tips, plus the good, bad, and crazy of what happened when I entered the singles world. Plus, you won't believe what I found when I Googled one of the guys. If you're Googleable and some skeleton comes up, you conversation is a two-way street. And he didn't seem to know that and this guy was not it so next welcome to my channel i'm liz amazing and these are exciting times to push past fear build confidence and live amazing and you definitely need to push past fear and build confidence if you're going to enter the dating world particularly if you're traveling in an rv so in this video i will share with you how to meet people plus the crazy things that happened when I got into the dating world, as well as my 10 tips for dating. I also wanna prepare you for what's likely to happen if you get out in the dating world. And yes, I will let you know what I found when I Googled one of the guys I'd been chatting with. So my situation is I'm recently divorced. It's probably just been eight months maybe, and I moved out of the house probably a couple months before that. So I'm just kind of sort of wanting to put my toe in the water. I'm not looking for anything serious, but I would like some companionship. So let me share with you some of the resources I've found. And I may not have all of them, so please, if you know one that I haven't mentioned, just put it in the comments. So the first group I joined is Lowe's, L-O-W-S, it's Loners on Wheels. I love this organization, I've done a camp out, I'm active on their Facebook page. You don't even have to pay if you're on the Facebook page, but they have a really reasonable membership. They have chapters all across the nation, and the thing about them is they are designed not to be a dating place. It's really a place just to meet other Loners on Wheels. It's mostly women, and I have found it's a great place to make friends. The next group is called WIN, and it is more designed to meet people for relationships, for couples, that kind of thing. Um, so it's a singles group, but there's definitely a lot of dating going on. I haven't done anything with them, but the way they work is they have a caravan that may last a month or two or more, and you can just pick up wherever you can just look at their agenda and join them for however long you want for a couple nights, a couple weeks or whatever. So that sounds really intriguing. And then there's Facebook. If you put in RVing single or RVing dating or dating in an RV, you'll find lots of Facebook groups. So it's a great place to meet people. You could put uh, your picture on there and introduce yourself to the group and you'll get lots of comments. And then another resource is Plenty of Fish. Even if you're traveling, you can just change the city and meet lots of, lots of people, lots of people. So I'm going to share my Plenty of Fish experience too. So let me give you the scoop on these three guys. And now it's not my intent to trash anyone. It's my intent to be just totally transparent so that you know what's out there, you know what happens, and maybe someone will see this and learn as to what not to do, right? Um, but I mean, you know, everybody is in a different stage um, in the dating and lots of people are just learning. So I am giving these three guys the benefit of the doubt, but I also think that there is some learning that can be done here. So the first guy, I'm gonna call him Aaron. I mean, that's not his real name. I met him on Facebook on one of the RV single pages. And he started asking me questions about my dog and my photography. And obviously he'd been on my personal Facebook page and seen my pictures and was commenting. So I thought that was great. I friended him and we started talking on Messenger. And here's where things kind of went downhill a little bit is that he started just bombarding me with these really long messages. I mean, words and words and so much detail about where he traveled, where he'd been. There was lots of details about there's a special park here and you can get here and do this. And it was overwhelming. You know, I wasn't living on Facebook. I wouldn't answer for a few hours and he, are you still there? Are you still there? And I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm, 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 I'm doing stuff. So, so I decided to tell him, look, I'm okay with this communication on Facebook, but let's just go back and forth. Let's just ask each other one question, answer it, and go back and forth. So he started doing that, and that was fine. So I thought, good, I'm empowered. I asked for what I wanted, so good. 
we talked about talking on the phone. He seems like an okay guy. He'd been single for five years. This is not new to him being single. He said, well, I can talk to you between 5 and 5.30. I'm giving a tennis lesson at 5.30 and I'll be driving down there. I'm going down these like mountain roads or something. And I thought, really? You know, I, you're going to be on the road and you're going to be driving mountain roads and and then you're getting ready mentally preparing to give a lesson it just didn't feel right for me I mean the 30 minute time slot was fine but it just didn't feel right for me that you know he's gonna be driving and talking to me I mean maybe my expectations are too high but I just didn't like that so I just came back with well let's just pick another time when you're not going to be distracted it turned out that the tennis was rained out so he said let's just talk all right so now we're talking on the phone and while we're talking, he lets his dogs out in the field and he's walking in the field and he's like, you know, calling them, buddy, no, or Sadie, come back here. You know, so right in the middle, he was like, come back here, sit. So it's, you know, we're all getting interrupted. Then he asks me, you know, well, why did you get divorced? And I answer him and then I hear Sadie, sit, come back here, sit. And I just waited and he said, oh, so you got divorced because uh, you all were bored with each other? And I'm like, no, you totally weren't listening to me. So that was irritating. And again, I asked for what I wanted and I said, hey, why don't you put the dogs up so we can really talk? And he did, so that was great. So Aaron, by the way, talked a lot. I mean, he pretty much monopolized the conversation, probably spoke 75% of the time, if not 85%. And he was just talking about all the different careers he's had and all the travel he's had. And then he started talking about his ex-wife and how she was an alcoholic and she was abusive and it was really a bad situation. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry about that. And we were talking some more and I said, have you done any personal work on that? Well, I'm looking at my role in my marriage. You know, have you looked at your role in this? You know, what you did to attract this? And he said, well, I know how I attracted her. She was just so excited because I was the head of this company. And, that, and I said, no, 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 I'm not talking about that. We know in a dysfunctional relationship, it's like a key that fits into a lock. It, there, that there's dysfunction on both sides of how you attract that. And he said, no, I disagree with that. And I said, no, no, it, it, it's really true with an alcoholic. The person on the other side is codependent or they're an enabler, but there's definitely a role that two people play. And he said, I've, I just disagree. And so we actually had to end the conversation. And I thought, you know, it's good that we had this conversation. It's good that I went there because I do like to go deep and I want somebody who will take responsibility and who can look at themselves. And this guy was not it. So next, right? Next. So the next guy I talked to we'll call Bob. I met him also on a Facebook group and we didn't talk very long on Messenger. We just messaged back and forth, but we happened to be close to each other geographically. So he said, we should meet for coffee. And I said, sure, you know, let's talk on the phone first. And, uh, you know, I went over to his Facebook page and I saw right away that he was separated and which was, you know, a little bit of a red flag. But then he still had lots of pictures of his wife, he and his wife hand in hand, you know, that kind of thing. Here's some advice. If you are thinking about dating and you're starting to talk to single people on Facebook, then take the photos of your spouse, your partner, whatever. Just get them off of Facebook, right? Anyway, so we're talking and actually we weren't talking. He was talking. 85, 95% of the time, at least 90% of the time. So here's another tip. Conversation is a two way street. And he didn't seem to know that. And he just went on and on and on. And finally, I just stopped engaging. So he kind of stopped and he said, oh, uh, do you have any kids? And I answered and then he went back on about himself. And then he said, well, do you want to meet for coffee? And I said, well, uh, you know, I'll have to check my schedule. And, and that was it. He had never looked at my Facebook page. So that's another tip. If you're talking to somebody, you actually want to go look at their Facebook page and kind of find out about them and, and then act like you're interested. So, so that was Bob. So then I joined Plenty of Fish and it's a free online dating site that I've never been on before. And as I'm creating my profile, I'm going to upload my photo and my email goes, bing, you have a message from Plenty of Fish. Bing, you have a message from Plenty of Fish. And it was all these people that were communicating with me. I hadn't even finished uploading my photo. And I ended up getting a message a minute, probably the first hour. And the problem was, is that Plenty of Fish, now I haven't figured out this part and I don't think there's a way to do it. 
I had said I was interested in guys within, you know, an 80 mile radius of where I am right now, but I had people contact me from around the world. I had Houston and North Carolina and I had UK. So it was kind of a waste of time. It filled my, my uh, mailbox up. So Carl is on plenty of fish and he is near me. So I thought, great. I reached out to him and he responded and, you know, he seemed like he had a great profile and I liked everything I saw about him. And he said, yes, let's go to lunch, you know, in a couple days. And I said, well, we should talk on the phone first. He said, sure. And, um, I gave him my number and then I went and looked back at his profile and I went through every picture and one had his first and last name on it. So naturally I Googled and guess what? Just last year he had a DUII, which is driving under the influence of intoxicants. It was definitely him and had the right age and the name was a little unusual. So here's another tip. If you're Googleable and some skeleton comes up, you might want to make sure that your photos don't have your name on it. I mean, any kind of dating site, you really shouldn't have your name on the photo. But I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt because, hey, you know, we all have things that we're not proud of. And for all I know, this may have been a turning point for him or may have been a fluke or whatever. So I was still happy to talk to him. I was still happy to go to lunch with him. So he texted me that next morning saying, thanks for your number. I look forward to talking with you later today. He was working like eight to five. So he would talk to me after work. And I said, sure, you know, just text me before you call. And then he texted again a few hours later, looking forward to chatting with you. And he never called. Now it was about seven o'clock. Do I text him and go, hey? And I thought, no, for dating etiquette, I am not going to reach out to somebody who's promised something and then they're not living up on it because they're showing me who they are. And if he has integrity, he would come clean because for all I know, he lost his phone, his phone broke, there was an emergency or whatever. So instead of me reaching out and saying, hey, are we still gonna talk, which actually makes me look desperate, I thought, I'm just gonna wait and see if he comes back with, I am so sorry, I had this emergency or my phone died or I fell asleep or whatever. But it's now been a couple days, so that's it. I'm kind of on two minds on, on this. I mean, there's a part of me that feels like we should all have integrity and say, I'm, I've met someone else or I've decided I don't wanna date anymore or you know, you know, I don't think we're a good fit. But I understand why it's easier to just end communication because if you are in integrity and you say, I've decided I'm really just not going to date or I've, I've met somebody new or whatever you do to come clean, you run the risk that the other person won't accept your truth and they may come back and, you know, kind of push back. So I don't have any issues with, with that. But sometimes in this super, super early stage, that's going to happen. So I want to prepare you for that. What's it been like for you in the dating world? Share your good, bad, and crazy in the comments below. And if you liked this video, you'll love my next one. Can old people fly drones? I'll see you in the next video.